Woo! It is a wonderful morning today in America, and I got my Ganali Williams with this morning. What's going on today? Marky, how are you? You always look great, girl. I'm Thank so you happy very to be with much. You. you know, you always put a smile on my face. You always have something positive to say. And instantly, when I start thinking about Amazon Live Creator, I thought about you because guess what? I mean, everything about this is timely to me, right? <laughs> because I have your autographed copy of Success with Listings, which is on Amazon sitting on my shelf. But <laughs> Hitler, the autograph right Woo! there. That's it. Collective right item. But it is a collector's items. But you know what? It's the most timely book right now yeah. because, as we know, how many years have you been in the in the real estate business now? Uh, since 03, 2003. I've, se I've seen some markets. You've seen some? Oh, 2003. Now, I want you to tell everybody because I know you. I know you dynamic. But tell everybody about you. Let me just let you know. We're over here. We're on Amazon. We are all over the Internet streaming live. Uh, the reason this is timely right now is because we know that agents are complaining about there is a lack of inventory. You and I believe there isn't a lack of inventory. There's a lack of listed properties. So Correct. tell everyone, I got this best-selling author here with me today. So tell everyone. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you, you know, I, I got into real estate when I was uh, 33 years old. And my first 10 years in the business, I listed and sold over a thousand homes. Um, at this point, I've sold over 1,200. I, I around 10 years in the business after I'd done a thousand deals, I said, you know what? I really like to teach, train, coach, and give back. Kind of like you, Marky. You you love you love teaching, and so do I. I mean, it's just a bug that we have. Um, and so I started teaching and training and coaching agents how to how to reach that zenith of success. Um, you know, I took over 100 uh, listings. Uh, I, a per year for over 10 years in a row. And my last year in quote active production, I did 153 deals. I still do listings. I mean, I took one, uh, I got a new one that's just, just about to come on. I took one last week, um, but mostly I'm, I'm doing the teaching and training now. I love it. Yeah, I love the teaching and the training. And I know that I've seen you out on the road uh, numerous occasions. And when we start thinking about success with listings, and th let me say this, this is like, this is the Bible, right, of success with listings. Yeah. The problem is how to find, right? Now, secure sale, we need people to find, right? Right. And what are some of the strategies that if we were, and I need y'all to go buy this book today. Um, let, let's start at the beginning because that's where agents are having a problem, right? I'm mm -hmm. hearing stats that we have uh, one point, a little bit over 1.4 million realtors globally, and there's only a million homes available. And, and right in addition yeah. to that, 20% of agents probably do 80% of the business. Yeah. Yeah. And the 1.4 million, interestingly, that's just nationally, you know, and uh, at realtors, that is, uh, there's about 1.4 in the United States. So when you when you start to take it around the world, then it becomes really uh, quite large, actually. Um, but, yeah, you know, what, when you think about listings, um, there are really there's only three buckets where all the listing leads that you ever need will come from. So I'm going to share that um, before I do. I just want to say that. Not enough agents are focused on listings, Marky. And this market, we've never seen anything like it. You know, um, I've got friends that have been in the business 25, 30 years. Um, I lead a group of over 200. And, uh, right now, we have 205 agents um, that, I, that I'm the team leader of. And uh, the thing is, I mean, we've never, those that have been in the market 40 years have never seen a market like this. But the ones that are really going out there, and um, and finding the listings um, are getting them, you know, because because the listings are there. People are considering thinking about selling their house. They're just on the fence about it. So after I'd sold about six or seven hundred homes, um, I did a I decided to figure out where all these listings were coming from. And I kind of deduced it to about 12 different sources. And but as I peeled it back even more, Marky, um, I realized that there were really only three buckets, only three buckets where all the listings that I had taken, or at least 96% of the listings that I had taken um, had come from. And the three buckets are number one, your sphere of influence. 
And this is going to be very, very pivotal. This is going to be the most important bucket right now. You know, when people are afraid, there's a lot of fear um, and there's a big catch 22. There's a lot of fear about putting their homes on the market. So number one is sphere of influence. Uh, number two is your farm, the, the geographical area that you have chosen to dominate. And then number three is your niche, your niche. What are you known for? Um, when you think about it, you know, there's a lot of really, really uh, incredible niches um, that are, you know, when you so 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 let me just say this and I'm going to turn it back to you, Marky. There are three kinds of sellers. OK, so when you think about niches, think about this. There's three kinds of sellers. Those that want to sell, those that need to sell and those that have to sell. And when we think about niches, I always like to think about the ones that have to sell. <laughs> and th that's where my niches have always gone. So when you might think of probate, divorce. Um, back in the day, we did short sales, things like that. Um, we're really have to sell niches, if you will. So you know what? I'm going to tell you, they they might think I gave you money before today because you preaching like everything you said is what I'm preaching. Right. So one, I appreciate you validating my thoughts. Right. So right. that sphere of influence and we always telling them, let's just go back in time to when we came into the business. Right. Yeah. We all wrote down that list of 100 people. I think that yeah. was like the custom, right, that you would go out to and let know this is what you do. Yep. The next one is that geographic farm. When it comes to the geographic farm, I'm telling people three things. I just met with a new licensee yesterday in my house on a Sunday. So that lets you know I love I, I love this guy. Right. He he got the plug. He's a went to college with my son. He's a neophyte uh, in there in the same fraternity. And so I said, look, yeah, I, saw, I saw the post. I love it. <laughs> Amazing. Wait, yeah. Thank yeah. you. So uh, ge geographic farm. Right. And I put three communities in the city of Chicago side by side. And I said, when you start looking at these geographic farms, I want you to look at the price point because that is important. I want you to look at the rate of sale and I want you to look at the barriers of entry. And I said, I'm not. I want you to go everywhere, but I need you to understand there's some places where you're not going to do business. Mm -hmm. And one of the places I mentioned was Chinatown. And I said, what would be the barrier? And he he didn't understand. I said, language. Mm -hmm. You don't speak their language. I said, mm -hmm. so unless you're going to learn their language, that's going to be a barrier of entry for you. And right. then the niche and why we can't get our agents to niche, to own it. To say you are the absolute best. Be Once you niche, you make more money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? I mean, this is this is true in the medical profession. So, for example, when you take a cardiologist, um, when you do the studies on it, a cardiologist makes about one hundred and fifty three, one hundred and sixty three thousand more than a general practitioner, even though a cardiologist works about 30 percent less in terms of the average time that they put into the job. Um, and so they make 150 grand or 160 grand more working 30 percent less time. Why? Because they're specialized. They're sought out. They're in demand. And here's a key word. If you're thinking about this, you write it down. They're relevant. OK, Ooh. they're sought out. They're in demand and they're relevant. If you don't have a niche, you're not relevant um, to many people because they, they look at uh, real estate agents as a commodity. Right. And so, yeah, you're right. You got a niche to get rich. You got a niche to get rich. Now, we have people who are able to chime in. So we have uh, Ayana talk. She says she loves it. Ayana is on it. Uh, she's she's taking charge of her business this year. We got Carrie Jo Little, who I was just on a call with before I came to see you. And she says she wanted to add a number four. Those that would sell because it makes sense and they would make more money today. Well, here's what's kind of funny, right? For those who are looking for the most amount of money in the least amount of time, now would be that time to sell. Absolutely. That's right. True. If you That's if true. you want the most amount of money in the least amount of time, today yeah. would be that day for you to sell. Uh, people are saying um, estates are also Valerie. Estates are people who what need to sell. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be nice that, if yeah. the family Absolutely. could get along. Right. And didn't yeah. have to go to probate. <laughs> Let me say yeah. this. And, yeah, and saying true. that what I want to encourage everyone here to do today, put your properties and trust where they are accepted. And I thought about this reason is because I sold my mother in law's house on Facebook without ever listing it. I mm. sold it 
and, and, and actually while the dumpsters were there because she was a hoarder and we were cleaning it out. Mm. We closed on that cash deal in three weeks because my mother-in-law put her property in a trust to my mm. husband. All my husband needed was the death certificate and his driver's license. Yeah. That was it. Do not allow attorneys to drag it out and make the most amount of money. Oh, we okay. have a, we have Miss Garcia over here. She says the riches are in the niches. She did say that. She says yeah. hers are families relocating to Texas and speak Spanish. Come on, girl. Oh, there you go. Let's go. Let's go. You know, the rich, the, the I like this one. Um, the rich here, the rich. Uh, the, no, the niche here, the niche, the richer, the rich, you know. Oh, say that uh, again. Or, uh, the niche here, the niche. And I like to say the rich here, the rich. The rich here, the rich. I like <laughs> yeah, that. The niche here, the niche. Yeah, I like that. So that that's a great niche. Um, Spanish speaking and relocation, relocating to Texas. Now, here's the thing, though, Marky, and, and I'm going to say this. Um, I've never I've never marketed for a buyer. OK, now I'm not knocking. I'm not telling anybody how to run their game. But we all know that the game is listings, guys. It's the game. We, we we're taught that from the day we get our license. And what I did, Marky, from the very first time that I got my license, very first business card that I ever ordered, my title was listing specialist. OK, that was my title on my business card from the very first day from from jump, as we would say. Right. Um, and so so I, I, I basically embraced the idea of going after listings at the very beginning. I have too many agents that I coach and train and, and counsel. They're like, well, I'm going to do buyers for five years and then I'll graduate the listings. I, I wasn't buying that. You know, I took 21 listings in my first 74 days as a real estate agent. OK, why? Because I, I, I read a book. Uh, by Gary Keller, uh, the millionaire real estate agent. I read it. Um, I read it multiple times and I just jumped in the game and did what he said. And uh, and so so the, the thing is, I want to I want to tell you guys that, you know, I'm not going to knock how you do, you know, go after buyers if you want, you know, do listings, whatever you choose. But for me, I started with listings from day one. Mm, now, I want you to know that you can pick up knowledge. Well, first of all, you got five books, right? Five I do have, on Amazon. Yeah, on Amazon, yeah. Five on Amazon. Books, yeah. Today we're talking about success with listings. Where's and actually, right. There, right. Yeah, yeah. And what's funny <laughs> about this, right? I came to know you in the midst of the for, for, uh, foreclosure short sale. So I think it had That's to right. be about 2010 ish. I want to go back, right? Mm -hmm. That, and but we didn't meet for, until years later. But that's when I got to know who you were. Look, you've been wearing that same hat, right? Not the same hat, but you know, a hat. Oh, it's, yeah. it's your signature exactly. piece, right? So yeah. I know you, I can see you down the corridor at any <laughs> convention center. Here come my man, right? Yeah. But I'm going to also say this a couple of things. And, and I know that uh, you are a religious man and we have to start affirming over our business, believing in the law of attraction and putting out exactly what we want. So mm -hmm. our language is important. You That's wrote right. listing specialist on there with the intentions of attracting that to you. Absolutely. Your words have power and Thanks. you should claim it all because one, it was promised to you. And I mm -hmm. said, Here's what's funny. Ten times. Right. So I always say I'm still working on my ten times every year. <laughs> I'm looking to see how I can increase. Right. Get ten times better because that was a promise made to me. So okay. just want to throw that out there, because oftentimes when you see people who have a positive, uh, a positive beat, no matter what. Some t it often comes back to their spirituality and other things that we don't necessarily always talk about in real estate. But I, everybody know I, I look, I got to pray. OK, because yeah, <laughs> he right. ain't done that's with right. me yet. Just yeah. wanted to throw that out there. So what is the that's name right. of the book? So the book is become a top agent in your market. Success with listings, how to find, secure and sell more listings with Nolly Williams. So I'm gonna hold this book up because you can go over there. Yep, we got them right mm -hmm. here to Amazon and pick up your book. But I want to see if we have any questions, guys, because we have people uh, from all the different social platforms chiming in, and this is also streaming live on Amazon as an Amazon Live creator. Let me tell you what we're doing. And Nolly, he is my first person. I wanted to figure out how we were going to really leverage Amazon Live in the world of real estate. 
So I went to my bookshelf behind me, right? And I reached out to all my real estate author friends, people who I've done events with, people who I respect and admired. And my, my man, Nolly was the first. So he is our inaugural, right? For interviewing real estate authors to see what the true impact will be for uh, us on Amazon, especially in the real estate space. So Nolly, I want to thank you for one, just for being the first, right? Um, but we want to real estate, honor. real estate, real estate. And this is another source of income. I just need y'all to know that, right? Um, from someone who had figured, look, you knew you were doing 100 transactions per year. That means you had systems. Yeah. You loved yeah. education and you decided mm -hmm. to bring that out. But let's see if we got any questions. Um, we got the name of the book. Uh, many new agents are guided to work with buyers by the listing top producers in their office. It serves That's them true. but limits you. Pat, yeah. Pat, come through. And Pat is uh, working on a publication now. Uh, and so, yep, Pat is absolutely right. Look, it's self-serving, isn't it? You get out yeah. here, you sell my listings. Yep. Um, yep. How did you into training? Oh, they want to know how did you transition into training? Yeah, that's a great question. And and uh, just for you, for those of you looking for the book, it's just simple success with listings. Um, that's it. Success with listings is the name of the book. Um, you can you can go to Amazon and get it. So how did I transition into training? So what I found was, uh, you know, it's a great question. Not many people ask me that, but but I find that the people that are trainers do ask or that have a heart for training. Here's what I want to say. Teaching is a profession that you don't get to choose. OK, it's a pref it's a profession that chooses you. If you're a teacher, that's what you are. You know, a lot of people are like, man, he went in or, or Marky's teaching because she can get this or that. We, the only reason why we're teaching is because that's what we are. We're teachers. And so when we show up, a class is going to get <laughs> there's going to be a class going on somewhere. You know, if I go to a barbecue, Marky, I'm, I'm start doing a PowerPoint or something, you know, after a while. So that's just what. So so. Uh, what, what I found was agents kept calling me for advice and I love talking to them. Um, I didn't even realize you could get paid as a coach um, until years and years later. And my wife would, would come in and I'd, I'd be sneaking. It was like I was sneaking on the phone, Marky. I'd be, I'd be uh, helping these agents because my wife knew I was supposed to be out there getting, getting, my, getting my business, right? She said, and then she, she would tell me, and my wife is very, very giving, very, probably more giving than me. But it got to a point, Marky, where I was helping so many agents because they knew they could count on me, call me, I help them, um, that I wasn't, get, I wasn't getting my own business done. And, um, but later on, I found out, hey, you, you could actually coach agents or you could, you know, now I don't charge really for the, the coaching side of it. I, I mostly do that. Um, like, like I write books and stuff and, and give it away as cheaply as possible. When you think about it, the reason I wrote this is because people kept coming to me to pick my brain and I love having it pick. So I would spend all this time with them. I said, you know what? Why don't I just pick my own brain? It took uh, it, it took 430 pages, <laughs> 430 <laughs> pages. But it is a system. It is a system for success. Step by step. It's not the kind of book you have to, to read through like a novel. It's a reference guide. So when you're ready to prepare for the listing appointment, you go to that chapter. When you want to know how to generate listings, you go to five chapters that I have on that. When you want to build a team, I got a whole section on that. So it really is comprehensive. Uh, but that's how I got into teaching. I just, I just found that I was spending so much of my time training and teaching agents, and I had more fun doing that than I did. Uh, and I was making a crap ton of money. That's actually, a, that's actually a, 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 a term. I was making a lot of money um, selling houses, but I just prefer to teach. Wow. And I'm glad that she, a she asked that question. And I don't think everyone knows that it's, yeah, it just kind of comes to you, right? Because mm -hmm. you sit there, Carrie says, the best way to, to pick my brain is to show up and sit next to me at lunch. She said, because I'm going to talk you to death, right? Um, <laughs> Here's what we got another somebody else. Appreciate your time and insight. My question is, what's your requirement? Oh, so here's let's uh let me say this. I'm gonna answer this for Nolly. Due to antitrust, we mm -hmm. cannot talk about commission rates um, yeah. because we are all affiliated with different brands. What I will tell you, there is no average, <laughs> there is no standard. Um, and so if there was a way that he could break that down without giving you clear percentages, yes. And let me just 
say a couple of things that I'm saying. <clears throat> We should never discuss publicly what another agent charges or what a person co-ops. I'm seeing that a lot of people are mad right now at listing agents because they don't like the amount of the co-op that's listed in the MLS. Well, here's the thing. You have the right to negotiate it, but they do not come publicly and shame people because you're violating the rules and regulations because they have the right to put as much or as little as they desire. Um, yeah. And so there is no average, no set, no standard when it comes to compensation. I do believe that we need to all decide what we believe we're worth and make sure that we are charging that. And there are some agents who get, you know, a percentage and there's some agents that get, you know, Z percentage uh, yeah. as we're in that industry industry where there is no average. Sorry, we couldn't yeah. add. Uh, we couldn't do that for you. Uh, but uh -uh, not on my watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I do go into some of those conversations in, in the book, you know, commission conversations. But, the you know, the reality is um, it, it's it's right there. Just like you said it, Marky, that's the, the, the bottom line. And what a lot of agents don't realize is that when you take a listing, when you're the listing agent, OK, the listing agent is king. So, uh, you know, if, if you take a listing uh, and you have a commission that you charge your client, that's your commission. And it's up to you what percentage of that commission you decide or, or what amount of that commission you decide to co-op. That's completely your decision. And of course, you have to uh, get the authority of the seller. Uh, for that as well in the in the agreement, but um, a lot of a lot of agents don't don't realize that, and they they think that what we have done customarily is actually law, but custom is not law. It's just what we've customarily done, but it's not law. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you know what's yeah. kind of funny, and it and let me say this: if you are one. I do believe that sellers believe that properties are flying off the shelf and definitely they want to negotiate. All right. Mm -hmm. But we still see some houses that aren't selling. <laughs> so that should tell you something about your pricing strategy. Yeah. So here is the time where the better negotiator is likely going to get the most amount of listings because they need to justify their value Correct. and what that means. Um, the next thing is <clears throat> when it comes time, you want to you want to understand what you're providing, right? And what's going to differentiate you, which is also why niches don't complain as much as well, That's because right. they're providing a specialized service. As we, someone said something about list pendants, as we start moving into, I think, more short sales, once the moratorium is lifted, I, I'm not negotiating compensation and I'm going to list some short sales. I'm not negotiating compensation. One, because look, Nolly, we get to go back and pull that same, the, the same stats. I got uh, New York Times, all that back from 2008. I get to pull all that back up, right? Yeah. And say, I ain't new to this. I'm true to this, right? <laughs> Here we come again. But it yeah. was definitely a niche. So here's the question. They rephrased it. So what are some strategies you sh would suggest for dealing with sellers that are on the fence for listing because they feel inventory is low? And if they sell, uh, what can they buy? There you go. That's how to position that question. So yeah, yeah. What, what's the strategy? Yeah. So this is what we're talking about is sellers that that need to make a lateral move. OK, and th that there's no easy answer for that. I've got a seller right now that's that's in the same in, in that exact boat. He's making a lateral move. Uh, he is very convinced that this is the time to do it. And uh, the reality is, Marky, there are a lot of sellers putting their homes on the market right now, even though it's uh, it, it may not be a lot in I mean, when you from a perspective standpoint, you're looking at how many agents there are to how many listings there are. But see what I teach my agents is to go get your unfair share. OK, you get your unfair share. Even when I was doing 120, 130 deals uh, on a year, the average agent in my town was doing eight deals, six to eight. OK, so it doesn't matter what average is. I'm not average. So and, and, and going back to your original statement there, Marky. Um, value proposition is very important. If you cannot state your value proposition and get a seller to believe your value prop, then you you're a commodity. OK, so you're, you're just like it's just like a can of corn. Am I going to buy Del Monte or am I going to buy this brand? It, you know, it's all about what's on sale. But the reality is when you when you 
take yourself out of the realm of being a commodity like Mark. Marky's done that. People see Marky, they got to come correct. They're going to hire Marky. You know, you're not getting a commodity here, right? Uh, and and we, and it's the same when we go out to eat at restaurants or we go to a certain movie. I mean, I might go to a certain movie theater. OK, and they have reclining seats. They'll bring you a blanket. You can you can have a steak with your movie. Now, I'm going to pay a different price than I'm going to pay at the dollar theater or the discount theater. But guess what? I'm going to see the same film. The difference is the experience. When you start giving your clients a different experience, they don't they don't argue with your fees. So I have I actually have three. I won't get into them on this because we don't want to get too deep down that rabbit hole. But I have three distinct things that I do that guarantee that sellers see the value prop that I have and they are willing to pay a premium price for the value proposition. The other thing that a lot of agents don't see, Marky, is that when 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 Marky when Marky Lemon sign, sign is in the yard, you know, other agents know they got to come correct. Right. So she's going to generate better offers. She's going to generate more offers and she's going to generate higher offers. It's just a fact because people see the name. They know they know they know they got to play the game. Right. And so that's that's the value prop. When you become a better agent, when you up your game, when you become the top, the king of your game, you you command, you know, top price, just like the. Just like King Crab commands a different price than Mr. than Little Crab. King Crab take Little Crab, right? If I'm ordering King Crab, you know what it's gonna say on the menu? MP. That means market price. That you paying my you paying market price. It's like, well, what price is that? It's market. Whatever I, whatever I say it is, that's what you paying. Look. You see? All these all you can eat buffets with the regular crab. I first of all. You know how much work it entails to eat your crab legs. So if I'm, a, if I'm not eating king crab leg, I'm not eating crab. That's the bottom line. So I'm willing to pay that expensive marketplace. And I like to go to the restaurants that even when you pay the extra price, they cut it for you. Or better exactly. yet, they cut half the shell and set it out for you. That's right. All That's right. right. That's because I want to enjoy my crab. I don't want to put in an hour worth of work. So yeah. you will, I will let you know right now. They got to give them to me free for yeah. me to, to do, my aunt goes to the boat. She a uh, right. seven star diamond platinum, whatever she is. I mean, she big time at the boat. She oh, like, Marky, let's go to the all you can eat crab buffet. Baby, do you know how much work that entails <laughs> and the value of my time? I yeah. pass. And yeah. people yeah. don't understand the value of their time. But now there was something. <laughs> You got me on these crab legs. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Ooh, I, I, just... I was I was just at Joe's last week. I was in Las Vegas, <laughs> and I went to Joe's, and and they and I had king crab, and and I got to tell you that market price, boy. They, I, I blinked a few times when they brought the ticket. It was just my wife and I. I blinked a few times, but I paid it. <laughs> Let me tell you the funniest thing. My husband had to apologize. I take him to steak uh, forty eight. He eats the lamb chops. The lamb chops was market price right he didn't know the lamb chops was 85 dollars so we get the bill i'm taking a family of four because as it, my aunt will say my sons are not cheap dates like my my sons eat for real for real right yeah. and so the bill come i look i said 85 dollars he said i probably should have asked marky i'm sorry <laughs> i'm like i hope you enjoyed them he said they was five i said from now on, we're gonna ask what mp really is because yeah. i wasn't anticipating crab look king crab price on a lamb chop but mm -hmm. one thing you said is you coming for unfair share what Absolutely. does that mean that means that you know you you set a number of what you desire and require and then you put that number out and that's what you go for you don't have to look at what everybody else is doing see in reality there is no competition competition is something that's a figment of your imagination the only person that you're in competition with is you you have no competition whatsoever. See, here, here's how I look at competition, Marky, and this is, this is real talk. So when you, here's what you got to ask yourself. Did God make any other individual on the planet like you? We all know the answer. It, there ain't no other Marky Lemons on the planet. We all know that, okay? And, and, and when you came to this planet, did you have a specific purpose? We know the answer is yes. OK, so if you're unique, nobody, there's no other person like you and you have a specific role and a task to do while you're here, then there's no other you. you there's no competition because you're the only one. God broke the mold when he made you and you, you're the only one that has the task of what you came here to do. So what I looked at it was, Marky, I said, what do I desire and require? I want to do 100, 
uh, deals a year. That's what I want. Well, what's the average agent doing? I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. So if so, the average agent in my market, it just turns out does, you know, six to eight deals. I, I did 100 plus. That's an unfair share. In other words, I'm getting I'm getting what I want out of the deal. Now, when you look at it, though, and you look at how many deals are happening in your marketplace, you will find, OK, just like Pareto's principle, the 80 20 rule, 10 percent of the agents are selling the majority of the listings. OK, so and, and the reason we do that is us listing specialists. We set ourselves up so that nobody else. I mean, we're intimidating. I remember when I used to wrap my, you know, my my van uh, had my, my my stuff wrapped up and I had all this stuff, Marky, just so that the, all the other agents wouldn't mess with me. Right. But in reality, any agent can do this. I already already understood it. Any agent can do this. So that that's what I mean by getting your unfair share. Get get what you know, you came and get what get what's yours. Get what's yours. And uh, you don't have to settle for anything less than what's yours. Wow. Unfair. I feel like we went to church on Monday morning, to be quite honest with you, because uh, you look, I'm loving every bit. If you have not had the opportunity, go over to Amazon and purchase success uh, with listings. I got my man here today, Nolly Williams. I've known him now for at least 10 years. He, I even have the autographed copy. He is over here dropping these nuggets. Now, I also see you got the 46 step listing system. Yeah. So as I'm going through this, <clears throat> I, it's only one thing because they want to know how should they generate? How should they approach this? I got somebody here from New York. They back to not being able to call. Right. How, yeah. how do I go? Yeah, get? Yeah. How do I get me yeah. some listings today? What, what, yeah. So here's here's this is this is a very interesting question because um, and I always get this. Now, I teach my uh, students to do the two. That's that's two hours of lead generation every single day. OK. Now, when I learned it, it was three to four hours a day. OK. But but when I teach agents to do that, they don't do it. So I've kind of scaled it back into something that's doable. I call it a two by four. That's two hours a day from nine to eleven, typically uh, two hours a day, four days a week, a two by four. OK. Now, here's the thing. I've never made a cold call in my life. Let me say it again. Uncle Nolly has never made a cold call. All right. So how is it that I've sold over twelve hundred homes and I've never made a call? And I, I hear people say this all the time. Well, I can't call. I can't call. Well, guess what? I never have called. I don't care. I, the D, the DNC never stopped me because I wasn't cold calling them anyway. Why? Because I'm an introvert. OK. And and, and because of my personality profile, I don't like I, I just didn't like it. it. felt creepy. I didn't like doing it. Now, there's people in my group. OK. That love to cold call. I'm not saying it's wrong. Uh, I got a guy that he he called. Uh, I don't know how many thousand numbers, whatever it was. I, I just don't do it. OK, so this these are not cold calls. I'm, I'm talking about. Listen to the list. Your sphere of influence. That's a warm call, guys. And by the way, according to the National Association of Realtors, 70 percent of people polled. OK, that sold their house within the last few years did so with a friend. Or a referral, or somebody that they knew, somebody in their sphere, somebody that was that 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 came to them through somebody else. Okay, so seventy percent of the money that you know of your paycheck is going to come from your SOI. Those are not cold calls; those are warm calls. And here's the thing, Marky: most of the agents out there won't even call their warm list. People that love them, they'd be happy to hear from you. So what I what I want to challenge you to do is call with no intention. Now, your bigger intention, when you when you create the intention of what you want, okay, you put that out to, to God Almighty, the universe, some people say, you know, you say, hey, I wanna do 25 deals. I saw somebody here said, I wanna do 25 deals a year, okay? So that's your goal, okay? And I, and I have a whole chapter on setting and reaching your goals, how to do it. So you set that out, and then, so that's, that's your number. Now, you have your list of 100, I say 200 people, okay? And I show you how to put your list together. And then you just reach out to them. Now, I teach an 18 touch. Okay, let me share that real quick. 18 touch, and I'm gonna bounce it back to you, Marky. So the 18 touch is this. Uh, number one, you should be hitting every single month your people with a monthly newsletter, okay? Now, it should be automated, okay? I say set it and forget it. Um, I've got some examples in the book. But every month, they should get a... Uh, an email from you automated. OK, then what you also want to do is send four postcards a year. Yes. Four postcards, snail mail. Yes. To your people, your list. 
uh, your, your sphere of influence, people that know, like, and trust you. Then you want to do uh, two phone calls a year. OK, uh, now what I would say this year now and most people don't even do that, Marky, that's a, that's 18 touches. And if you want to throw a 19th in there, you could do a Christmas card or a, a New Year card. Happy New Year. Um, but the thing is, right now, just call your people and check in on them. OK, because most sellers are uneducated. All right. The reason why they're not making we didn't talk about this. I, I got on a tangent. Uh, somebody asked me about sellers that want to make this lateral move. What you want to do, this is what I did with my sellers. And, and what I'm doing with my sellers now is I'm educating them. Yes, you're going to pay a hundred thousand more when you buy a house here in Austin. You're going to pay a hundred thousand more. But guess what? We're going to get one hundred twenty five thousand more for your house. Let me show you. Once they understand the math, Marky, it's not it. it, it I mean, it's. The lateral move is really the same. So like I've got a guy right now, he's going to get about one hundred and fifty thousand more for his home than he would have gotten this time last year. OK, but he's going to pay for what he's buying because he's kind of downsizing. He's going to pay about eighty thousand more. It's just math. OK, so big deal. I mean, you're going to get more. You're going to you're going to pay more. So but 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 the thing is, you have to educate them because they're uneducated. They're watching the news. They, they're scared. The reason why a lot of people haven't put their house on the market, fear, <laughs> fear and doubt. So you come along and you just you. you. So so here's the kind of call that I want you to make. OK, I'm going to share this real quick and then we're going to bounce it to Marky. Uh, when you call them up, just have a conversation with them. How are you doing? How, you know, check out their Facebook feed before you call them. Check, you know, and then comment on a few things that they got going on. Now that the conversation is going to bounce back to you. OK, I say call them. What's the best script? Hello. Now, I got 95 scripts in here. OK, I do have I got 95 scripts in my book. Nolly likes him some scripts. But right now I tell people, what's the best script? Hello. Wait, how are you doing? Say That's it again. Script. Hello. How are you? <laughs> That's Look, it. I'm getting phone calls. Right. So just a simple. Hello. 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 Go Hello. practice that. Hello. It's going <laughs> to come back to you. They're going to say, well, well, how are things going with you? And, and, and you know what I would say? If Marky is my client, I say, Marky, things are going great with me right now. You've seen the market. It's crazy. But I got a big problem. A bi oh, you know what? Maybe you could help me with my big problem, Marky. Well, what is it? Well, my big problem right now is inventory. I can't keep them in stock. And I got a list of buy. I got a lot of people looking. Oh, by the way, who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or maybe move? And then they start talking. OK, now, if they're thinking about it, they're not thinking about it, whatever it is, you know, uh, you know, that that's the conversation. The other thing is when somebody asks you how the market is, don't tell them it's crazy. Don't because I, 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 you know, my wife has to time put me in time out for this because they say, how's the market? I say crazy. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You watch your words now. I say, you know what? Um, it depends. Uh, why do you ask? You know, you start a conversation with people when you say. Oh, the market's crazy right now. You know, you just told them that it's not a good time to sell your house. Don't even mess with this. You, you, you know, step back. No, you want to say, you know, it depends. It depends on which area. You know, why do you ask? You know, and start a conversation with them. Go ahead, Marky. Well, first of all, the hello just <laughs> just took me back. Right. How simple is that? Um, but knowing the numbers and we got Carrie Little, she's an MLS specialist with us right now. And it is about knowing the numbers, because what I just heard you say is I can really get you what you want. It will cost more, but you will also net the most amount of money in the least amount of time and be at the highest level of happiness. Correct. Right. And Correct. so this is numbers. And I'll even give my example. If I were closer, just a little closer to retirement. Right. My goal is to live in warm weather. It would be the ideal time. I would look at how much more I would net right now in the least amount of time. Go get me that look, move where my son just moved to. Go down to the South Loop with a swimming pool doorman and all the building amenities, right? See what that payment difference is. And mm -hmm. if I would net more, I could live in Chicago another couple of years, yep. right? Yep. Rent, pull from that reserve, but still have the most amount of money in the next couple of years to go buy something further south, right? Absolutely. So right. This is right. a think with the end in mind is mm -hmm. what I'm I'm hearing here. Right. And yeah. in yeah. yesterday, talking to the 24 year old newly licensed agent, I was telling him about his real estate career. I said one. What I wish people would have told me was think with the end in mind. And it's OK to say no at such an early age. I said, because then 
you won't allow these distractions to occur in life right, right? and right. so when we come back over here and we start looking at these list at these properties we got to think what's your end goal so that means we got to ask hey what's going on yeah. you know has anything changed in your life mm -hmm. what's your end yeah. goal let me let me help you because you got right. an asset that's right that that's can right. fund it all yeah yeah and just like you you i mean i i've i've i can't tell you how many people i've consulted that you know you could look in fact my wife was just talking to uh, a seller recently about that same exact exact idea. You can liquidate your asset now. You can get the most money possible, and then you can lease. Even though we usually don't advise people to lease, but this is this market is different. So we say, hey, well, you can lease for 12 months or 18 months. <laughs> you know, let the inventory levels get back to, and then you you in a, you're in a great position to purchase because you got all this money in the bank. You, you're flush with cash, you're liquid. So yeah, the reality is there are, it, but it become, it comes back to you being a consultant to your client. The reason why people are not putting their houses on the market is fear. They're just afraid. They don't know what's the market going to do. It's, and, and by the way, if the moratorium had been lifted, Marky, we wouldn't even be in this situation. You know what I'm saying? We wouldn't be, there, there's a whole lot of different uh, sort of the perfect storm. A lot of things have come together to create this um, perception, if you will, um, of of this this which has turned into reality of this um, uh, of this lack of people actually placing their homes on the market. But you got to understand, there's a lot of people selling right now, and there's a lot of people that really would desire to sell. They just need to talk to the right professional to get them to understand and weigh their options. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad, look, we think the same. We both believe that there's a plethora of inventory. There's a lack of listed properties. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I came up with a whole new strategy. We did Operation I've Got Houses for Sale. And everybody right now has a bunch of buyers, right, sitting on the bench. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so why don't you get exclusive buyer agreements and mm -hmm. then do for sale by owners to not create yeah, um, like competition that. For the buyers, right? Because right? right. everybody got these buyers. How am I going to get right. this all-star roster of buyers up off this yeah. bench is what I want to know. Um, well, here, yeah, yeah. And here, here, that goes back to the one of my favorite strategies. It's called the trial listing. OK, so if you're if you're implementing that strategy that Marky just taught you, I mean, that's 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 money. You just gave them some money right there, Marky. So if they're implementing that strategy, they can now call through their list with their trial listing. And it's like all the trial listing is like, hey, Marky, um, have you considered selling your home? Well, I've considered it, but this market right now, well, you know, we have a trial listing. Well, what's that? Well, that's where I can list your home for seven days or 14 days. We have a 14 day trial listing and you, you could even have it off the market. You know, you, we don't have to put a sign. I mean, there's all kinds of strategies right now that you can be sharing. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, we've got several buyers. We'll just bring them in through your house. And how easy is it is that, Marky, to um, and I like the term trial listing. I like to use that term with them because it's like, oh, I can do a trial. People like that. Oh, I can try. I mean, really, they're listing their house. And is it going to take more than seven to 10 days to sell their house? Of course not. Right. And, and, and by the way, all we all you have to do is get the word out to your colleagues. Hey, I got this person that's interested in selling if he could maybe get the right offer. OK, you have the exclusive. Make sure you get that in writing. Um, and so there's there's different and, and, and run that by your broker, too. Right. Some brokers don't like to do anything less than a certain amount of time. So if I if, if I if I'm working with someone, they say, hey, my broker needs a six month listing, whatever. Then I say, OK, well, put somewhere in the agreement uh, in the language, if your broker will allow you that the seller may terminate this listing at any time after 14 days or after whatever the trial listing term is. So there's a lot of strategies, guys, that you could call people or, or bring up in conversations. Um, just to get people off the fence, because there's a lot of people right now that want to sell their home. They're just not talking to the right professional. <laughs> They're saying their mind is blown. So let me just tell you something. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I heard when you said trial. Listen, I just started thinking nice and on the cake. I just want you to know that um, right. I'm thinking, dang, how great would it be? Right. To drop that property on the market on a Thursday, have that open house set up for that Saturday. That's exactly Maybe what it is. If you, you don't have that sucker listed by Monday, you not doing your job. You, it's right. something wrong. See, it's that, something and that, wrong. And that's the trial listing. You list it on Thursday. You have an open house for two days. You collect offers on Monday. Done. It's, Done. It's, 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 that's, that's like a guaranteed paycheck. Well, I, now I want to <laughs> add to that, right? Because, you know, I like we like to give people value right here. We didn't look. We didn't blow it. Oh, it's getting they, good they, now, boy. Let me like, get my bag like of this. tricks out. Look, they like, right. But here's what I'm thinking, right? 
In addition to that, you tell them make your first offer, your best offer. The seller will not be looking at highest and best. Submit all offers. Like they that. will be presented at noon. On, so you ain't got to call me. Yeah. All offers will be presented at noon on Monday. That's right. Period. That's right. Oh, right. uh, we just look. Yep. I just felt good. Like that. that felt all kind of good to me, baby. I just said, uh, yes. Okay. Make your, make your first offer your best offer. We ain't playing the game. You know, I, I even have people that at uh, one of my recent listings that we closed a couple weeks ago, they were putting like, uh, we'll pay a thousand over the highest offer. We're not playing that game. Make your make your first <laughs> offer your best offer. I like that, boy. That's game right there. I like it. <laughs> Wait, you got to get clarification on this okay, question. Sorry. Do you ever right. consider exclusive agency or only or only deals with exclusive right to sell? I got my own mm. thing to say, but I'm gonna let you go. I only like exclusive right to sell agreements, and here's the reason. Yeah, I've never done exclusive agency. I've only yeah. done exclusive right to sell. Go ahead, Marky. Yeah. With the internet. Right. At the moment I put it out there, it's going to attract attention. So I would right. never give you the opportunity right now. Buyers. Let me. T the, OK, let me come back. Take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. The reason I would not do an exclusive agency agreement, especially in a seller's market. Once that property hits the market, you got buyers who are knocking on doors anyway. I'd okay. never give the seller the opportunity to not compensate me because I gave them an out, knowing that is the moment I put it there, if I price it right, if I do my due diligence, we clean it up, we do reverse prospect and we do all this for mm -hmm. you to not have to compensate me, especially if I'm doing you a trial. That's it. I uh, that you would, answered that would, it. That would be my thought. Guys, Exclusive if right have... to sell. That that's the only. I don't even know there's other contracts out there. That I didn't know there was another one out there. <laughs> I, I you know I've done I've done over 1,200 listings, and that's the only form I've ever used. Exclusive right to sell. You know. So yeah, yeah. And 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 by the way, sellers won't challenge you on this. If you have sellers that are really like you know, toe tipping in the FISBO and all this other thing, then, you know, you, you've got some uncommitted uh, sellers out there and that, that's okay. But if they understand your value proposition, they got to understand, Marky, that you're going to bring them, for example, let's say the house is 400,000. Okay. So, okay. We're talking about four to $8,000 in commission. Okay. So you, you want to, you want me to drop my commission one or 2%, for example, you just throwing that out as a, as example. a, just, Example, you want to drop me by 2%. So that's $8,000. Do you not think that I could actually bring you more than eight grand? I mean, just, just the marquee limp. And you guys got, don't miss this now. Okay. Cause every single one, this is an equal opportunity business. Every single one of you can have this kind of game just by having marquee lemons on the sign. You're going to, you're going to make another 20 grand. See, and people don't understand that. And, and, and this is the value that you bring when you, when you study the game, OK, study the game. You become a listing specialist and you're going to have that game within 90 days, 120 days. You're going to have the same. You're going to look you're going to look like Marky. You're going to talk like Marky. You're going to basically be. And, and, and by the way, let me go back to when I first got my license and I put on my business card listing specialist. OK, a lot of people get tossed up by that. The reality is, ask yourself this question. Can you specialize in anything you choose to specialize in this business? Yes or no? Absolutely. Yes, you can. Okay. So I didn't say I was a mega agent. I didn't say I was a top agent. I didn't say I was top. That stuff came later. Okay. What I said was I'm a listing specialist. In other words, I made the decision, the choice to specialize in working with listings. And I did work some buyers, but guess what? When buyers saw my card, they were like, oh, you work with sell. You work with listings. That's right. So you know that I got the inside scoop on where the listings are. See, if you, what's the number one way to attract more buyers? Just have more, have more listings. listings. That's it. So when you when you become when you when you jump in the listing game, you solved all your problems. So here's uh, one question here. Someone does the book get into, I guess, niches inside of the listing side of the business? <clears throat> yeah. So so the so the book does cover uh, niches and there's about 40 different niches that I or maybe 42 different niches that I rattle off uh, in there. Um, and, but there's some really unique niches. I, I have a buddy that owns one acre plus the number one acre plus dot com. I've got a buddy that owns uh, I've got uh, s uh, folks in Atlanta, some friends of mine that only sell churches. I mean, there's all kind of niches, guys. So don't don't. And by the way, don't real just realize that a niche is a division of your business. It's not your entire business. It's just one division. 
So you got three different buckets. You've got your sphere of influence. You've got your geographical area that you target, and then you've got your niche market. OK, and depending on what niche you go for, that's going to determine how you actually market or how you I mean, you got to learn the game of your niche. Right. Mark, you talked about short sales. I, I did. Whew, I did so many short sales. I, at one time I had like one hundred and twenty one short sales going at one time. Right. And that's back in the day when they, they would sit. They, you'd have them for a minute. <laughs> so you had to have a big uh, a big inventory at that point. So. Yeah. yeah. And, and mm -hmm. let me say this. I believe we're definitely going to see a change in inventory in the next 12 months. So yeah. even in talking to people, now would be that time to maybe live that other lifestyle. I gave you my example, live downtown, doorman, all of that, and then transition with the most amount uh, of money. Now, guys, mm -hmm. I'm going to drop this link one more time for you to go over to Amazon and buy Nolly's book. Now, my, mind you can buy more than one because he got five over there. So you can buy more than one. But today we are focused on success with listings. We want you to change your language. There is not a shortage of listings. There's a shortage of listed properties. I can say that Annette Anthony checked me. She got me in my language right one day. So I appreciate her because I've been on it ever since. <laughs> I let everybody know. Uh? And then Carrie Little... <clears throat> In her class, we went and we did some reverse prospecting, also mm -hmm. using Remind that predictive analytics tool to discover not only not only inventory, but who might be a hot uh, seller right now. So mm -hmm. in closing, because you didn't lit it up today, I want to know what is your one piece? We got a lot of people came into the industry. What is yeah. one thing people need to do that they can do in the next couple of days? No excuses. To, to get a listing? What's something that they should be doing right now? Uh, yeah, from an action standpoint, and this, you know, I'll, I'll leave the mindset piece out of it because the, the mindset is really the key to this whole game. If you can, if you really can unlock your mind, your mind, then um, you, you've really unlocked the game. You've, you've unlocked every game at that point because 90, 90 plus percent of your success is going to come from mindset. Okay. It's the belief that you can achieve what you're going for, right? But but putting it more in practical terms, um, because I could spend an hour just talking about mindset on practical on the practical plane. If you would just start doing the two, integrate that, and and when when I say that, you create a lead generation bunker. Okay, this is very important for you to understand this. This is this is something that I I did a lot of things wrong in the business. Uh, Marky, but if people ask me, what's the number one reason why you were able to take over a thousand listings in your first 10 years in the business? And I heard every every other kind of excuse that people could give, you know, about why they weren't doing it. But the number one reason is I did the two. It's called D-O-T-H-E and then write down the number two. Do the two every single day. You create a lead generation bunker. You go into your lead generation bunker at nine o'clock. You do not emerge until 11 o'clock. Okay. You could take a bio break. You could take one, right? But you take your snacks, your coffee, your, your, your tea, your, what, your water, whatever it is, you take that in there with you. So you don't have an excuse to leave your lead generation bunker. Okay. And you, and you, and you hunker down and you work on, uh, the lead generation strategies that I teach. I teach them in chapters six through 10. There's five chapters all about lead generation. So you sit down, you don't have to wonder about what to do. You don't have to think about what to do. You just open the book to chapter six and, and, and it says, okay, Nolly says, do this. You just do it. Okay. And you're going to have success. Now, here's the thing. When you're doing the two, there's only three things that you can do during that time. Okay. You're going to generate new prospects. You're going to follow up with existing prospects and you're going to generate and implement marketing plans. That's it. And that's just step one of the 46 step system that I teach. <laughs> that's just step one, guys. <laughs> so I've dropped it. I'm going to put it up here again. Go over to Amazon. I have put the link in several times. Purchase success with listings. I am so elated that you came and made our inaugural show just absolutely lit. Um, man, I, I, look, I got notes galore sitting here. All my little <laughs> sticky notes sitting here because you are fire and I appreciate you for being willing to come over here and share your time and your knowledge. Guys, we're going to sign off as I say goodbye uh, to everybody. And let me tell you this. We had a bunch of folks on <clears throat> from 
every place. They were just hanging out with us. Uh, they thanking us. They think you the bomb. You got a few people going to start calling you uncle. Don't even worry about it. Just let you know that. 